Um, this is example number four on conservation of momentum. We're going to continue the previous example that we have been working on. But in this example, we want to know what is the force that we will need required to keep this reservoir in place. In order to do that, um, we have set a control volume as we previously did, and this control volume is set by me. We could have chosen any other way, I chose it like this. The total volume of reservoir is 10 feet square uh, cubed. In this particular problem, everything is given in inches, so it's a lot easier to convert this into inches. Uh, inches cubed. Um, it's also known, it's very close assumption actually that P1, P2, P3, P4 will be approximately atmospheric pressure. They are exposed to atmospheric, atmospheric pressure. So it gives a very good assumption to that. It is 14.7 PSI. Uh, the density in slugs per inches cubed will be 1.375 times 10 to the 6 and this is for air, and for um, the gravitational constant at 386 inches second squared. Um, so what we are really asked for in the problem, before we move on, let's understand what you're asked for. You're, what you're saying, the problem is saying, give me the equivalent, equi equivalent force of the fluid That would be, we want to find the equivalent force of the fluid first. That's Fx, I, Fy, J. This is the total force of the fluid. But that's not what the problem is asking, okay? But you need to find the equivalent uh, force of the fluid, but you are asked for mainly the reaction, okay? The reaction to hold the tank. Okay, so you want to, the reaction to hold the tank will be R, the react, total reaction, let's call it a different color, R plus F is equal to zero. You know, this is the R that we are talking about. This is R. So in other words, what we are really looking for in the problem is, give me the value of R that will be the same thing as minus F or minus Fxi minus Fyj, okay? So this is what we are, this is our goal, this is my aim, this is what we are looking for. It's a lot easier to solve the problems of filling this table in first. To do this table, you have to know a couple of things. First of all, so just remember, the N it represents the value uh, outside the, uh, the contour volume. So my n goes in this direction, right? It's, it's outside the contour volume, and it's in the direction of uh, y. So this will be uh, plus. This will be plus j. This section right here is outside the contour volume. Just remember, it has nothing to do with this value. Nothing it has everything to do with the x. That's what you compare it against. So this will be in the opposite direction. That will be minus i. And this one is, again, the control volume goes downwards, and but this goes up, so this is minus j. And the last one, it goes in this direction, and that would be plus i because it goes in the same direction. Same logic for your velocity. Your velocity, it depends on the arrows that you placed here. This goes up, so therefore this would be uh, 6j plus this is goes in the opposite direction. Nothing to do with the arrows again. The unit vector has to do with this, with the coordinate system. Six, and this is opposite minus six. This is a uh, six is going inside. This is in the same direction y, so it's plus six j. This is going in the same direction as x. That will be plus i. Okay, and we know from. Uh, your previous, uh, from, from your homework that was kind of, uh, that was given in the previous example. Uh, this is one in, this is all inches squared. Uh, this is one, this was one, this is four, and we found that this is equal to two. Okay. So, uh, we told, uh, we said that everything is going to be in PSI. We are doing everything in inches. So 14.7, 14.7. And this is 1.375, 10 to the 6. Uh, 1.375, 10 to the 6. 
minus 6, 1.375 times 10 to the minus 6, 1.375 10 to the minus 6. Um, again, we really don't need disease in this problem. We are not looking for pressure. Everything is given, so it's not necessary to have disease. So we uh, will move on with the problem. Okay, so if you remember and you recall, the question that we are really trying to solve in these problems are the following. Um, uh, this is the triple integral of rho, uh, the total derivative of v respect to t dv. This is volume uh, over the total enclosed uh, total volume. This has to equal to the triple integral of rho body force uh, over the volume uh, minus the enclosed integral over the surface area pressure times n dot s. So if we try to work this side only, uh, this side is actually equal to the following. Um, we know we derived it in class where this is equal to uh, nothing else than the triple integral of partial derivative of time of rho times v, the volume uh, over r plus the enclosed area over s v rho velocity dot n over ds. And the problem is, uh, is it, this is equal to zero because the problem is steady state. Uh, steady flow, steady state flow. Um, so if I continue with the problem, then your, your real equation then becomes as follows. We can rewrite the equation as the enclosed area. You know, I can take this equation and bring this on the other side. Um, and I find that these are the equations that we get. Uh, v dot N, D of S, uh, minus the triple integral over the area, rho over v plus pressure over ds is equal to zero. And let's work with each integral individually, one, two, and three, and we put it all together then, okay? So let's work with the first integral. Uh, integral number one uh, states the following: <clears throat> the double, the enclosed area integral of the velocity uh, uh, times rho v dot n ds is nothing else than the summation over your openings. The problem had one, one, two, three, four openings, so therefore it goes to four. Um, rho i, v i, the velocity vector, <clears throat> velocity vector dot n i times uh, delta s i. And we expand this whole thing. You will have rho 1, v 1, uh, velocity 1, velocity 1 dot n 1 uh, times delta s 1 plus velocity 2. Uh, okay, so small change here. Uh, yeah, we can do it like this too. One, this is rho two, velocity two, velocity two times n, delta s two, plus rho three, velocity 3, V3, and 3, delta S3, plus velocity 4, uh, rho 4, velocity 4, dot N4, delta S3. So, now you basically uh, replace all those values. 
I am uh, going to uh, not replace the uh, row here at first instance because it's a lot easier. I'm going to call row is equal to row one uh, is equal to row two is equal to row three. Um, this is an equal sign. This is two. So um, keep everything in terms of row. That gives you the velocity at one comes from this table. This was uh, six. Um, then multiply by six J. Uh, you had a row dot N was positive J. Um, then this is multiplied by one plus row times minus 6j for 2. Again, you go to the table. This is i. Sorry, this is i. Um, and then your velocity would be uh, 6j uh, dot minus i. Sorry, this is i. Um, this is times 1. This is your s. Plus, and again, uh, I could keep replacing everything in here, and you find that I get 6j dot minus j times 4 plus uh, rho 6j times 6i. This is i again, sorry, i dot i multiplied by 2. So you can expand this whole thing and you can show that your end result will actually equal 2. Uh, replacing all the values, that gives you a total of, okay, um, the first term uh, gives you uh, Four, four point nine five one ten to the minus five. This is j. Uh, the second term you get plus minus four point ninety five times ten to the minus five. This is i. The third term gives you. Um, minus 0 0.001 uh, this is j the last term gives you uh, 1.902 10 to the minus 5 this is i um, and that uh, gives you a total value of so your first integral this integral is actually equal to uh, 4.951 times 10 to the minus 5. This is i. Uh, this is a minus 0 .00, uh, uh, 0.0149. This is j. Okay, so this is integral number 1. Let's go to integral number 2. Uh, <clears throat> integral number 2. Uh, is this integral uh, over volume r and uh, what you know in the problem is if you look at the problem okay so we're talking about we're working with this guy and just know that in the problem your velocity goes your y goes up and your g your your g goes down right so in your problem, your y is going in this direction. However, your gravity is going in the opposite direction. So in this case, your body force will be minus g in the direction of j, not k, because it's j, because you're working in the y direction. So therefore, this total volume, this will be the triple integral rho times minus g j, uh, g j uh, over the volume, which is nothing else than equal to minus this times the volume in the j direction. And uh, replacing all the values for um, for this value, you find this is equal to minus 9.17 uh, 
uh, 3j. Uh, so now we move on to do uh, integral number 3. That's this integral right here. Uh, that integral basically uh, states the following. Uh, you have the enclosed uh, enclosed area over s p dot uh, p dot s. This is nothing else than the summation of i equal to one to uh, one to four uh, p i n i delta s i plus f. Okay, this is the equivalent force. Um, equivalent force, uh, fluid force. Okay, this is where you replace it. And uh, so the whole thing then basically becomes equal to P1 N1 delta S1 plus P2 N2 delta S2 plus P3 N3 delta S3 plus P4 and four delta S four, okay, plus Fx plus Fy, J and I direction. So replacing everything again, to simplify our problem, I'm gonna write P is equal to P1, um, is equal to P2, is equal to P3, is equal to P4 because the problem stated they were all the same. So just simplify our math a little bit here. So this will give you P, uh, N is J, uh, this was one. This is going back to this table. This table is your uh, master slide and this is what you want to keep uh, working on. Is P minus I times one plus P uh, minus J times four plus P plus I times two plus your equivalent forces. Um, so if we replace all these numbers in there, um, rep replace all those values, you will find that um, your uh, item two, um, your third integral is actually equal to uh, 14.7 um, J plus minus 14.7 I plus minus 58.8 J plus 28 uh, uh, 29.4 I uh, plus FXI plus FYJ. In other words, this whole thing is going to equal to 14.7 plus FXI plus um, minus 44.1 plus FY. This is J direction. Okay? So now we want to go back to your original equation uh, and replace all these values. So let's take this slide, let's duplicate this slide, bring it down here. So the first, in the first equation, uh, we found that the value that you got was, um, this is the equation that you got. So um, this is uh, 4.9, Five one uh, time to the minus five. This is I plus uh, minus sorry minus point zero 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 one four nine J, um, and then you find your row. This was uh, minus nine point seventeen J. And in your last equation that we found here was uh, equal to, uh, this is minus, remember there's a minus sign there, there's a plus sign here, and this was equal to, uh, four, uh, let me put brackets, 14.7 plus F, uh, 
fy, fx, i uh, plus uh, minus uh, 44.1 plus fy, this is j. This is your second integral, it comes from here. Um, now all of this has to equal to zero. So we combine all these terms, we add all these terms together, and uh, <clears throat> you find that this is, the whole thing is actually equal to uh, um, uh, 14.7005 um, plus fx in i plus uh, minus 34.928 uh, 69 plus fy in j is uh, equal to zero. So therefore solving now for uh, the equations that we are looking for, um, uh, you can see that this is the only way this can be zero if each one of these individually is actually equal to zero. So we come here, come here, paste. Okay. So that means from here you find this has to be zero and this has to be zero. So you find the fx is equal to minus 14.7 uh, in the i direction, fy is equal to plus 34.92 uh, in the j direction. Uh, and then your r, th what you're really looking for is for your r. Your r is minus f, okay, so that would be actually equal to, or from here, you see that your f is actually equal to uh, minus uh, 7i uh, plus 3492 j. So this will be the minus of that, that gives you 14 point i uh, minus 3492 j. So really is saying that uh, we had our axis in this direction, right, y. So what this is saying that your, the reaction that you need to keep this in place goes in this direction. And the real force that's acting on your, on the body is actually acting in the, that's the resultant force. This is your F and this is your R, what you're really looking for. Okay, so this is your final answer. So this concludes example uh, number four.